Welcome to Monday. This is Sticky Learning Lunches, myself, Nathan Simmons, and I'm also duetting today with Jeff Birch as well. I'm going to bring him on in just a second. I'm pretty sure you can see him in the, on the side there. Welcome everybody to Monday. I'm excited for today because this is the first time I've done a duet in this space, and in that in itself is, 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 a, is a revelation and something new to me. We're just waiting for the last couple of people to turn up and come into the room. Just as we're doing that, setting everybody up for success today. Drinks available, making sure that we've got our drinks available, water, herbal tea, whatever, so that we can fully focus on what we're doing here today. Mm, definitely need it. Number two, mobile phones. Let's make sure we're zeroing out the distractions. 100% attention on Jeff today, what he's gonna be sharing, the content, mindset, ideas, very different approaches. So let's make sure we've got our phones out. And everyone on flight mode, gonna make sure mine is done. And the third thing, keepers. We at Sticky, Sticky Learning at MBM, we talk about keepers. It's the things that you need to write down to make sure that you're remembering the key points, the ideas, the new realizations, that you're documenting them down and making sure that when you go back to read them again, that they're, they're sparking new ideas, new curiosities, reminding you to come back to this content time and time again to develop the thinking to help you be the best version of yourself in this time and moving forward. Last couple of people arriving, brilliant. So we're going to crack on. Introducing today, Jeff Birch. We've already had an interview. Um, we did some work for the blog and we posted this on YouTube. Categorically, what it says about him, he is a rip-roaring keynote presenter. He is six best-selling books. He is a BBC presenter. I am honoured to be sharing a small amount of time with this man with you on today's subject, which is all about sales. And I alluded to this last week that every day is a sales day. And this is why we've got Jeff here, because we've led him from coaching skills into personal development that then leads you into job interviews, pitching, projects, sharing ideas. Every day is a sales day. And we're hoping with the content of the next four days from Jeff, that we're going to get this skill set embedded, this way of thinking to help you develop, deliver and overachieve. So welcome to today's training. Final people in, welcome to MBM, Making Business Matter, the home of Sticky Learning. My name is Nathan Simmons, also with my friend Jeff Birch. These sessions are all about helping you be that best version. Let's get on with today. So Jeff, bring Jeff back in. Jeff, welcome to Sticky Learning Lunches. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm marvellous, how are you? I'm nuts. I've been <laughs> driven nuts by the shutdown, so I'm... Uh... I'm un, I'm doing unspeakable things. <laughs> like doing these virtual classrooms with me. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. and other things. <laughs> well, look, I'm in charge of the whiteboard today. So we're going to be covering three key points, myself and Jeff, with you there um, listening in. Um, today, predominantly, we're going to be talking about what is sales, the sales mindset, we can, and also be talking about part one of this cunning four-stage sales plan. And I'm conscious of time because these sessions are very short. They're micro learnings, they're quite intense, and Jeff likes to speak <laughs> <laughs> for a lot. You know, he gets paid for this, which is what, you know, he's good at it. Jeff, look, for you, for you know, the wonderful people that have arrived, Stuart, thanks for very much for coming again, Tim, Amazing, seeing some new faces and existing and regulars as well. To you, Jeff, what is sales? Well, everybody, sales is applied to everybody. Sales certainly shouldn't be the province of salespeople. <laughs> what, actually, let me tell you something. It's not about selling. It's about moving people. Okay, it's about moving people from one place to another in their mentality. We're in a world now where we can't just tell people to do things. I mean, at one time, doctors had this power that people respected them. So they would say, listen, old chap, give up smoking or you'll be dead. It was very simple. But now, if you're a doctor, you know where your patient is smoking. You know where you want them to be is not smoking. And that's a sale. It's moving that mindset from wanting to smoke to wanting to be alive. You know, so 
we are all in this business. Maybe we'd like a job. So we're moving the person we meet from, I don't like the look of this bloke, he looks shifty, to this is exactly the employee we need for this business. And that is a sales process the world over. You know, wh whether it's we're trying to persuade our kids to stop picking their noses or whether we're trying to get an employer to give us a job. We need to move people. Yes, and I'm just thinking it, you know, it's like stopping your children from picking their nose or going for a job. It's the same tactics that we have to employ. We have to remove the objections from the individual so we can get where we need to be, but they need to get where they need to be, which is now, you know, with us. You're showing signs of old festery. Good. Old festery sales habits. Objections. Yeah. Now, I do not like objections because. No. I like the people I persuade. They're my chums. I persuade my wife. I persuade my kids. I persuade the people I work with. Objections is combative and aggressive. I much rather think of them as concerns. So my wife says, where would you like to go for holiday? And I say Mallorca. And she says, I don't want to go to Mallorca. Why? Because you'll spend the whole time in that boat and I won't see you. So I go, OK, now she isn't. That's not an objection to Mallorca. It's a concern. She's concerned that I it, she won't get the holiday that she wanted. So I was I will come to some sort. Of, oh, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I go for a sale before breakfast and then spend the rest of the day with you? That's a solution. It's not dealing with the objection. It's not slick. It's not dishonest. It It, it is me uncovering my customers concerns or my and and it's not dealing with them it's it's putting them at rest it's a lovely kind gentle way of dealing with it rather than having the aggressive objection you know we we you know our customer is not our enemy they're our chub absolutely and you know what every day is a sales day and every day is a school day as well so thank you jeff it's appreciated <laughs> just to bring the the the, the the audience for that want a better words into this, you know, what concerns are you helping or, or what concerns do you need to be thinking about in your current projects, in your current endeavors? What concerns have you got coming up that you would like to overcome, work with and incorporate into your dialogues? Let's see those in the question box, just so we can get a flavor of what's going on for people and start coming up with some ideas to help people incorporate this thinking into helping them move forward. Have you got yeah. a job in? Hold on two seconds. So have you got any job interviews, projects or, or sales you're, you're doing for the audience that you've got concerns coming up? Another important thing, especially like job interviews or anything else, is if, if you think about them as objections, they are often difficult to uncover. So they, they, they might say, I'm not sure we can trust this bloke, but they wouldn't say that in the job interview. They say, well, thanks, jolly, well, very nice, very interesting talking to you, and we'll let you know in a few days. Well, I need to find out. I've got to start asking some pretty careful questions to find out, you know, just because, I, just because I've been nicking their ornaments, then they've spotted it on their their security cameras is this what's putting me off the job you know whatever it is i need to find out and again you know too expensive you know too expensive i mean we we, we love we love your product but it's too expensive that we need to ask some very gentle questions about what do they mean by too expensive do they mean too expensive we're dearer than everyone else do they mean too expensive as they just haven't got the money to pay it? Too expensive under the current proposition I put, it seems unfair that I've asked the price. You know, I need to under I need to take apart too expensive. Because if I say no, we'll do it cheaper, that just means that hasn't dealt with their concern. It's just me panicking and knocking money off, which is always disastrous. And like you say, yeah, when you're going with this idea of it being combative, you're already creating a level of resistance, which is going to kind of um, um, demean the conversation that you're about to have. So 
valuable lesson in this for everyone. Objections, change into concerns, ask better questions to find out where the concern is coming from. And Just, also, they can be signals. We don't, because particularly me, I talk and never listen to anybody. It's, it's my biggest failing because I love listening to me. <laughs> but you, you get a customer that says, under the current climate, we couldn't possibly afford this. Well, I didn't listen. I, I heard him say he couldn't afford it. But what I should have heard was him saying, under the current situation, he has given me a signal saying that if I could change that situation, he possibly could afford it. He's not saying no. He's signaling that there are there are situations where he would. So we and need to listen to signals as well. No signals are the other opportunities which actually make you a more viable candidate, make you a more viable provider of a service. If we're looking for the signal rather than looking for an objection. Uh, objection. Yeah. Amazing. We're already jumping on to day three's content. That's the only problem with this part of the conversation, Jeff. So we're already running ahead. So just <laughs> in the questions box, we've got a couple of things here. Vanishing prospect syndrome, um, you know, challenges that are coming up. Get on board with the project. So we're wanting to help people get on board with projects. Potentially got a job interview. Identifying the questions to ask so I can cover the issues. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to look at some of those, in a, that, especially that last one about what questions to ask. We talked a bit about this earlier today, Jeff and I. Let's get, in, cause of, let's get into part one, because I'm conscious of time. We're getting into part one of this cunning sales plan. Can I give the little bit of background on that then? Of course you can. Bring it. When I was, when I was a kid, I was a real smart, I still am a smart ass, to be fair, but I was a real smart ass and I was a natural persuader. It's a thing I'd got from school that I been expelled from a three schools I should have been expelled from six I could usually talk my way out of trouble and and it just meant sales was the thing to do you know uh off I went flogging stuff and it it, it was just I was a dodgy geezer flogging stuff and good figures um, and a sales manager an old hard bitten monster said you're just a shambolic mess and if you don't do what I tell you, I'm going to fire you. Even though you're our highest earning salesman, you could do better. And he gave me this piece of paper and on it were four, he said, this four stage plan. It's not my invention. He said, if you don't follow those stages, you're sacked. And the first, the first one was, have, you know, the first question was, um, you know, why am I making this? What is my objective? Have, have I achieved my objective? You know, and that 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 is the sort of first one, you know. And, and you know, I, I work with salespeople now and so many of them have absolutely no objective. Yeah, they think they have. I, I sit I sit in the car and say, why are we here? It's one of our best customers. You know, one of these guys had been on a on a sales course, um, was on a sales course uh, called um, relationship selling. So I said to him, what are we doing here? And he said, oh, this is one of our most important clients. We have a fabulous objective, a fabulous relationship. I mean, I said, oh, brilliant. I said, what are you going to sell them? Oh, shh. Sh I don't want to sell them anything. Why not? I don't want to spoil the relationship. No. <laughs> why, why are we here? Oh, to see if they want anything, to tell them about our new product, you know? Well, so, so many times we either have no object, no reason other than we have been told to go and see potential customers and tell them something about us and see if they want anything. And one of the keys to this is we fail to measure success. I mean, you go to see, you go to see a customer and come out and I say, how did you get on? Now, if I'm your sales manager, you will answer fabulous, fantastic. Well, how, how, how do you work that out? And the reply is usually they were very interested. Or if you've been in the game a long time, you abbreviate that to V-int. 
So on your sales reports, it says VNT. <laughs> and whose fault is this? Sales managers, and, and back in my misty day, some of them actually had call rate. I want you to make eight calls a day. I'll know you ain't working unless you make eight calls a day. And I was sitting in a reception once, and a, a bloke came to a skidding halt and knocked on the window where the receptionist opened it. Hello. Uh, what can I do for you? Can I see your buyer? No, he's busy. Oh, give us a compliment slip then, love. She gave him a compliment slip and he waved it at me and said, nine today, nine today and buggered off. So, uh, so when he reports to his sales manager, he's going to have 10 compliment slips. His work, his work ethic is unchallengeable, but he was a crap sales. <laughs> you know, and again, why are we going? What are we going to do? And how do we measure the success of that call? Let me jump in here, Jeff, because we've already got some points here of, you know, what are the concerns that we need to, that are coming downstream? And we've talked about those in previous sessions. And it's an interesting, you say, changing that objection into an objective, almost, you know, in the, the people that are already put the answers on or the, the responses previously, what is your objective? from these conversations, from the project you want to get people on board with, you know, the potential job interview, identifying the questions. What's the objective that you want to get to? Let's see that in the questions box, just to get the flow of thinking. Because when you know what the objective is, you can start identifying the right questions to be asking. You can start to see the impact that you want to create in the business that you want to go and work in. The question you need to ask yourself is, what am I doing here? I mean, what, what is it I want? And, and again, I've seen that the classic is the ambush. I, I love the ambush. Um, you, you arrive because you've been sent to visit potential customers or perhaps you're working for yourself. You have absolutely no hope of selling anything because you haven't sold anything in the last eight calls. You've been chucked in the street. <laughs> You knock on the, can I see the buyer? I'll, I'll just ask him. And she gets your name completely wrong. What's your name, Jeff Burt? Hello, Mr. Jenkins. I've got a Mr. George Brunch. Jeff Burt. George Brunch to see you. Oh, yes. He says he can spare you a minute. Would you like to go and sit down? So you sit in a squidgy chair with your knees above your ears, or your sort of box on your knees, and there's a tip to anybody watching this never accept a drink ever 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 in a call accept a drink. do you know why because your entire call that you've planned so meticulously after listening to me is now dependent on how hot that ghastly drink in the plastic cup is you know yep. so you get the order you're sitting there and they go so I would finish your drink before you go. So um, anyway, uh, how long have you been in sales? Well, not not long. I, I, I was, uh, you know, I started as soon as I came out of Nick. It's about six weeks ago. You know, this is this <laughs> this is the time when the bad stuff. But in this case, you're sitting, you've got all your stuff and you've got this red hot cup of coffee. And then you hear these footsteps. Click, 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 click. Smith, how do you do? I've got, I've got 30 seconds. I've got a meeting. Tell me a bit about your business. Oh, oh, right. OK. So you pour boiling, boiling hot mud in your crutch, which is, you know, and then your sump, your case bursts open, your sandwich, your spare pants, your leaflets, and you start gabbling crap at this bloke because you aren't in control. You haven't planned it. You didn't expect to see the buyer because you always think you won't. And what you do is, Mr. Smith, lovely to meet you. I can see you're really busy. If you've got a meeting, into, can I just ask you, if you've got your diary, can we, can we make a time when I can come and see you and show you all the fabulous things I've got in this box? You know? So what was my objective? My objective, if I'm cold calling, is to get proper time to do a proper sales call. I am not going to sell my atomic power station with a crutch full of hot chocolate and my leaflets scattered around their entire reception with a bloke who's too busy to talk to me, you know? And it's the same. If you meet, I, I see 
sales people, oh, anybody. But I see reports saying time waster, tire kicker, not interest, this, that, and the other. Didn't meet the decision maker, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to see the decision maker. One of the key objectives is to get the person you meet to give the highest possible thing that they're allowed to. So you, you arrive and there's the lady cleaning and you're, you've got to sell an atomic power station to Mrs. Miggins, the cleaning lady. Hello, Mrs. Miggins. Hello, love. Is there anybody? Ah, oh, no, they've all gone home, darling. Oh, have they? Oh, because I wanted to sell an atomic power station. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be me, my darling. So who's your manager? Well, that's Mabel. She's my manager. She's uh, she, she sits up in the canteen with them all. Oh, you wouldn't ask Mabel if she'd have a quick chat. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, she's here. In the, Hello, Mabel. Hello, darling. Who's the buyer for atomic power stations? That's John. Oh, yeah, we've been there. Uh, yeah, me and John have been going out for quite some time, you know. That's 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 the whole key to this, you know, that the the ability to, to whoever you meet will take you the next step up. And that, that, that's the objective. Do you know, it's about measuring success. If I sell my I, I was sitting with one guy and we and I said, what's your objective? My objective. I went to your seminar, Jeff, and my objective on your recommendation is to get an appointment to meet the chief buyer to demonstrate our product. And that would be success. That would be a measure of my success in this call. I said, good, good, good. We arrived. The buyer said, oh, hello, lads. I'm a bit tied up. Can't stop. Here's a check for 50 grand. Get the stuff delivered next week. And, we, and he went. So we're now sitting in the car with 50 grand. And I said, so that's a failure then? And he goes, well, I suppose it is really. I said, don't be an idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, success must be achieving your objective or a sale what's a failure is doing nothing no measurable forward motion that's the point not not hello hello john anything this week no all right mate keep in touch i'll keep in touch have you made your mind up no all right mate i won't push you give us a ring that is a failure it goes on week after week after week when nothing moves forward, you know, did you get the samples? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm a bit tied up at the moment. I'll just check if I've got them. Well, if you've got the samples, give them a try and give me a ring. I will. So he writes in the report, when get sample, will call us. V interested. No, he isn't. <laughs> so look, yeah, I'm conscious of time. We're hitting 20 past one already. So look, so what I've captured already from what you shared, one is what is sales? You know, it's about moving people from one place to another. You pick me up on the objections language, which is marvelous, old school combative, whereas we need to change those objections to concerns so that we can start to look for more signals to build the conversation and making sure that we have an objective in that conversation. So whoever you're speaking to, whether you're building a project, whether you're selling the atomic power station, whether you're um, going for a job interview, whatever it is, that whoever you speak to, you, you've got a quick fire response or, or thinking process that helps you to speak to that individual that's going to help you speak to the next individual. So you can lay those breadcrumbs all the way to the person and build the relationships all the way through the organization to get to speak to the person you need to speak to, to create or, or move towards that objective that you set to make sure you're winning the day. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, you're a you idiot. And I, you and I did a very good job, I think. So look, I'm, <laughs> con I'm conscious. <laughs> These ideas are scalable and transferable. So now, whether it's you're selling a product or selling yourself, what do you want to get out of the conversation? Where do you want to get to? So open question for everyone right now. What have you got out of the last 20 minutes that's useful, that is applicable to what it is you're working on at the moment? We're going to just wait for those questions or those responses coming. What have you got from today's session that's useful that's going to help you get to where you want to be? We'll just wait and see, wait for those responses to come in. We've got a combination of Jeff is nuts, hilarious, and a guru. Love that. Yeah. Um, love the relationship part. Absolutely. 
also someone here has put a, an epiphany for themselves what is my objective and um saying this person earlier talked about her potential get got a job interview and interviews coming up like i said what is your objective for getting the job it's not just getting the job it's the value you're going to add after you've got the job that's going to get you the job what else we got finally understand what sales is fine what we, we if if we change one mind, Jeff, with some of this approach, we're winning. Someone said they don't agree with the word objection being banned. <laughs> I think I, no. I, I think I, I just reply to that. I, I understand that I still call it dealing with objections. It's just that it does give you this feeling that somehow you can't play chess with somebody you're sitting next to. That's the point, and that's a good thing. What I'm saying is, if you if you're on the same side as the customer, you know, chess is a battle. I, I don't want to go into people and have battles with them. I want to solve their problems. I want to understand their concerns, and I want to have a relationship that is profitable to both of us. And if you don't watch out, if you read the old slick American sales books of the sixties. You're dealing with objections, setting it aside, the gun closed, the, at, at the atomic bomb, you know, and you, you, you kind of think, mm, you know, let's be chums, let's be cool, let's chill, let's smoke a doobie and sign the deal. <laughs> it's, it's the same whether it's, for me, quantum or Newtonian physics. The moment you put, like you say, you create a resistance or, or um, position yourself, you have to be in opposition to something. There has to be an alternative, or, or, or an opposite resistance or pressure to, to maintain that positioning. And in this, you know, yeah, there might be objections, but when you come back to almost that martial arts idea, it is, is okay, you, rather than strength versus strength, you kind of just go with it, turn it into something else, and then give it back to them. Yeah. And like that, you're coming up with solutions based on the signals that you're picking up. What is it, what else are they saying? What else can I incorporate into my conversation to kind of to work with them rather than like grab hold of and deal with the objection and focus on that all the time? It doesn't stop you being sneaky. I mean, one of the one of the one of the one of the ways is to repeat the objection back, but try and change the world slightly. Bloody hell, you're expensive. I can understand that when I can understand that you feel that a prestige product like this. <laughs> Uh, you know, you've changed expensive to prestige, but but you and you're repeating the concern back to them. It's a very good way of doing, but but again, I I just again I just feel more comfortable de handling concerns rather than dealing with objections. And I owe an apology. I misread that bottom question. It says I do agree that the word objection should be banned. Roger, apologies for oh, that. Roger. It They're on your side. Good conversation. So well <laughs> done, Al. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm... we handle your concerns, <laughs> even though you've got a completely arse about face. <laughs> I'm going to hold my hands up to that one. Look, I'm hoping this session's been useful and, and this approach to what sales is and isn't. What questions have you got for myself, especially Jeff, because he's the, the lead in the, the, this comedy duo today? Um, what questions have you got for Jeff today? about objective setting overcoming and, and reaching your objectives what questions have you got for us today just wait for them to come in as they come in jeff what's one thing that you do to help people achieve their objectives a conversation with them uh, uh, to clarify what it is exactly they want to do because they simply say, I want to sell more stuff or I want more customers and I want this, that. And then you have to kind of sieve that down till you understand. First of all, it can't be maybe done on the first the first call. Secondly, you know, what as as we work through this four stage plan this week, we'll see that there's a lot of things we can do with a customer apart from just sell to them. You know, we need to get information from them. We need to accumulate. The thing is, it's like a snowball. Yes, it's nice to 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 have a sale or or change someone's opinion, 
but we also want to, this relationship to gather more and more valuable stuff for us information about our industry information not not just did we get the job but we know how to move that job forward we know where there are similar opportunities with other employers we need even if we didn't get the job who else is hiring because they know if they're hire if they're talking to you and say i'm sorry uh, nathan you didn't get the job and you say well that's a shame i really would have loved to work with you Perhaps you could give me the name of the HR director in similar companies, because this is exactly the sort of work I'd love. <laughs> you know, maybe you didn't get that job, but it might they say, well, it'd be wonderful if you could call ahead and let them know that I'd be very interested in working with them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm talking bollocks now, but you see, but it's not just the opportunity, the narrow opportunity in the person you're speaking to, but it's the broader opportunities. If you're talking to a farmer and you're selling him, I don't know, some piece of agricultural equipment, he will know every farmer in the county. He drinks with them. You know, it's an intro into his whole industry if you ask the right question. So your objective may not be just to flog him the harvester, but it's to gather intelligence about his whole industry so that you can get intros into other farms. You know, his nephew might have the biggest farm in the county. Question has come in here, Jeff. One is, should you have a, a sliding scale of objectives? So if one doesn't come off, you have another and another and another. 100%, 100% definitely. Definitely you should. You, you, yeah, that's a brilliant question. House point for that. Um, yes, I, I, absolutely. You should have fallbacks. If, I, if the guy doesn't give me a check for 50 grand, what else do I want to know? You know, what can I diarise? You know, um, well, we, we're not going to invest in a new machine this year. We, we hadn't really budgeted. You know, we've only just installed one. So we wouldn't be looking for another 12 months. Well, blow me down. He's going to get a phone call in 12 months time. Yeah, Eleven, here's the other little tip, by the way. You don't look stupid if you write things. Um, I, that's another thing I used to do. I used to sort of clasp my knee and gaze into the customers limpid blue eyes it's not a great idea that you can actually you can act like the coffee you shouldn't accept times your sale you can actually time your own sale by saying excuse me can i just make a note of that did you oh next year which what what machine are you using currently mm -hmm. okay just make a note of that people actually make it actually weirdly makes you look at intelligent if you stop the sale and say, can I just make a note of that? Let me just take those details down. It makes you look extremely professional and it ends up with you having a pile of notes and information. That's a great objective to have, have loads of background stuff about what's been going on in their industry and other people's industries. And then if, if you don't get that job or that sale, actually, when they introduce you to the next one, you already have a whole, mu a whole load more meat on the bone Definitely. to have the rest of the conversation that actually closes the deal on the next one. Rather than being in combative or frustrated because you didn't get what you thought you were meant to be getting, actually, you've got those secondary gains, which then becomes a... Allows you to pace it. In the old days when people smoked, pipe smokers were really annoying. Pipe smokers would spend ages dotting the pipe and packing the tobacco. And, and it was a kind of way these people would use to time their conversation with you. They were in control because they had this thing. And you can do the same by writing things. You should be in control. You should not lose control of your customer. Uh, I, if we had a longer session, I'd do my little thing about trying to sell a tank to Genghis Khan. I mean, some. Customer, well, a lot of customers and job interviewers and potential life partners can be very intimidating. And because they're intimidating, they will screw up your objective by. So you walk in and you think, well, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to arrange a meeting. I'm going to get a demonstration. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to close the sale. And they go, how much is it? They go, what? How much is it? I mean, there's no point in talking anymore unless it's, you know, unless I know the price. You go, um, well, I, ha, 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 uh, I hadn't 
planned or get it to price yet. No, come on, come on, how much is it? it uh, and you've got to say, Mr. Smith, hang on, let me just make a note of that. Mr. Smith, price is something I understand is very important, but I just want to show you this before I get to price. I will be dealing with that. You've got to stay in control. Otherwise, you get booted about all over the place. You end up back in the street wondering what the hell it's you. You know, yep. you've got to pace yourself and be in control. Jeff, we're on, we're on time. In fact, we're rapidly creeping over time. So we've already covered a lot. So we covered three things, moving people from one place to another, dealing with objections, turning them into concerns and picking up the signals and making sure that we have a clear objective and also scale back. Some of the key things, don't accept hot drinks. It's just, yeah, in an interview, a, a sales bit, don't do it. It's, it's gonna cause a problem. Um, and also making sure you're taking lots of notes. Store the information so that you can strengthen your understanding and your objective achieval for the next time, absolutely vital. Before we wrap up, what has been useful from what we covered today? I'd love to see this in the question, but what has been useful so far from what we've spoken about with Jeff? Jeff, I just wanna say thank you for today. That's been illuminating for me. It's reminded me of lots of the mistakes that I've made as a, as a young salesman um and you know how to and, and, and how to develop from this tomorrow we're going to be looking at the second stage of the the cunning four-part sales plan so we're going to look at that i've got my notes here so we're looking at you know, what have you what have you learned what are you learning so we're coming tomorrow going back into that in that, that element of what are you learning and we're going to build on that so jeff's already started alluding to that and that's what's going to be tomorrow's session i hope this has been useful I hope this has been helpful to some people, especially preparing for the job interview, projects, sharing ideas, developing thinking. If you haven't already registered for tomorrow so we can continue this conversation, register now. The link is in the chat box for you to click through right now, making sure you're ready for tomorrow. And this conversation is gonna continue. Jeff, thank you for today. Thank you everyone for being here. And I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. Right, he says.